it's Lori. Yes, it's still me. I cut my hair. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. Today we're going to talk about my reading plans for March, my to be read or TBR list, if you will. Now, I want to just say I reserve the right to change my mind and just choose something out of the blue that I want to read or something that comes in the mail or whatever. But I do have a loose, tight uh, hold on what I want to take a look at in March. Now, I read five books in February. And for me, that's pretty good. And partly was because uh, that was because I participated in contemporary a -thon, So I really pushed myself to read in that week. However, I should be able to, could be able to approach that mindset all the time. And so I thought perhaps I would try this time if I created a stack of books I really wanted to read in March and I saw them somewhere every day, would that make me more likely to continue to go down the stack and read them? It's possible. I'm going to give it a shot. I have a couple of dance competition weekends this month, which is always good for reading for me because you know, there's a lot of reading time. I have, um, I, I, I have a commitment to read more. I have a couple of trips, I think, to the um, doctor's office. I should be. I need to make that appointment. Uh, so I feel like there's some ways in which I can get this done. So let's get started on the stack. Number one, I have already started Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. See, look, when the sun shines, you have to move the book so the glare doesn't hit the book. It's a miracle. Okay, Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. I'm about 100, a little over 100 pages in, not real far. I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful. It is a fantastic story with a magical feel. So I want to finish it this month. I also have it on audio so I can listen and read. Uh, so I feel like I can get this done. And, and I had put it down for a little bit. I wasn't kind of moving through it fast. And now I really am. So I feel like, again, I, I, I think this will be read in a couple of days. I'm going to do what some of the other people do. I'm going to kind of mark my, my page, just my, like how many pages I want to read, <laughs> how many pages I want to read. Um, a day and then just make myself read to that tab. So that's what I'm going to do with a lot of the books that I read this month. I think that's a great idea. And I could do that with a buddy read, but nobody's buddy reading with me this month. Okay. The next book I want to take a look at and maybe before March 15th is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a mystery, uh, a Sherlock Holmesian kind of mystery. And uh, I, it, it, so if I were to get it done, I'd like to get it read by March 13th. That may or may not happen, but there's a local bookshop where I purchased this that has a book club on March 13th, uh, which I've always wanted to be a part of an in-person book club. And so if I get it done, I can do that. If not, I can just go to that bookstore and get the book for next month's book club meeting and they meet the second Wednesday of every month. Nevertheless, this is a couple hundred pages, 230 or so. No, I'm sorry. What was that? I was thinking when I opened it, how can that be a couple of hundred pages? It's about 500 pages, but it's a uh, trade size. So um, uh, yeah, so it, it shouldn't be too long. And uh, hopefully it is, um, it's compelling to read. So this follows a crime writer whose editor reads his manuscript and it's, you know, typical, like always Agatha Christie, Dorothy Sayers, like crime mystery. And uh, then something happens and there's a, maybe a murder that's connected a little bit to that uh, manuscript. So that should be interesting. Magpie Murders, Anthony Horowitz. Another important book for me to read this month is an ARC copy of Little Darlings by Melanie Golding. I received this from Bookish First because I um, reviewed the first three chapters to a chapter try with Bookish First and I was gifted this copy. It comes out in April. I'm not sure what day in April, so I do want to read it now and do an advanced review 
for this. Uh, this follows a mother who's just given birth to twins, and she thinks that someone comes in and takes them or replaces them with something else. No, no, she thinks the babies have disappeared in the night, and then they're returned, and she thinks everything's fine, and people think she's crazy, and she's sleep deprived, and she's a new mom, and whatever, and then uh, she takes them out one day uh, in a park, and they disappear, and they come back, and she's sure that they're not her babies. I know, right? I can't wait. Uh, Melanie Golding, Little Darlings, lovely cover. Um, it's just creepy looking that cover. <laughs> so that is number three on my list. Okay, March is middle grade March. It's a month long readathon that focuses on reading middle grade books. And it's hosted by Krista at Books and Jams and Katie at Life Between Words. I think that's right. Yeah. So uh, you have the whole month of March to read one middle grade book or as many as you would like. And so I have chosen to listen to a book called Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. I think it's Ryan. Yes. So this book I have heard a couple of times in a week. I've heard about this book three or four times, <laughs> once on a podcast, once on a booktube channel, once from somebody who started reading it on Goodreads, uh, and maybe one other time. I have heard that this is maybe the best audiobook uh, ever. It is musical as well as um, I think it's lyrically written and uh, people just can't stop talking about listening to this middle grade novel. It's published by Scholastic Press and it follows a boy who somehow, his name is Otto, and he somehow meets a group of friends and they uh, have a couple of things in common, one of which is a harmonica. And later they're, they're flung across different places, but their stories continue to intertwine in some way. This got like over four and a half stars on Goodreads. I mean, it's hugely popular right now, and it's the perfect time to listen to it because it's a middle grade. So I'm excited to make that my one, two, three, fourth book of March to read. And it's a priority for me. So the last two on my list of six are nonfiction works that have been on my currently reading shelf for quite a while. Not because they're not good, but because they are good and I take notes and I kind of savor them and journal about them and, and I've been going through them kind of slowly for that reason and other stuff took priority. But I just want to, I have a really long currently reading list. Don't look, I'm embarrassed by it. Uh, but there are certain books I may never pick up again. I need to decide that. And there's one in particular I'm really struggling with, but that's for a whole nother video. I may do a whole video about what's on my currently reading shelf. Um, but some of them are just not being finished, and I want to finish them. I really want to finish them. So this is the month I'm going to give that a shot. So the first one is I Will Not Die an Unlived Life by Donna Markova, Reclaiming Purpose and Passion. It is a rich, beautiful, beautifully written, introspective, I mean, I guess it would fall under the category of memoir, but it also, I think, even though it's a memoir, it is, there's some things that she asks questions that she brings up as she's considering these things that really make you think about your own life and make you really consider when you're at some of these spaces in your life, when you're at some of this turmoil or, or thinking or desire to move past something, what might help you to do that? I can't really describe this book very well, but I can just tell you that it's one that I will read over and over and over again. I learn something new all the time. It starts with this great poem called I Will Not Die and Live Life, which you can find free online if you'd like to read it. And then it just goes through chapter by chapter of some things that she needs to get past and let go of. I underline a lot of things. I write notes inside of it. Um, so it's just, yeah. Um, 
I can really relate to her. She Wonder Woman is her kind of iconic um, comic book part. And um, this is a quote just on that note. I imagine Wonder Woman here teaching all of us. She holds fear at the edge of the unknown, which just happens to be our growing edge, what we most need to learn. She peers over. She feels fear, but she also feels alternating currents of fascination. A bubble appears over her head as she asks, what am I more curious about than I am afraid of? That is what I mean. So I journal a lot about this. I think a lot about this. Sometimes I cry when I'm finished with a chapter. Or sometimes I enthusiastically share it with someone when I finish a chapter. Nevertheless, I love it. And I'm probably just about halfway through, but it's time for me. I just want to, while I want to savor it, I also want to complete it. I want to, to honor Donna and say, hey, I finished this book again and, and I'll take it up again next year. The next one is You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. I heard on a podcast uh, that I'll link below because I can't remember the name of it, but there's a podcast where these two women um, read self-help books typically and they review them and they go through them very diligently together and they practice whatever you know they, they talk about in, in the book for a month or so. They really integrate it for a while and then they review it and talk about it whether they liked it or didn't like it. Some books like The Secret they really hated. The Little Book of Hygge they kind of liked like I did. Um, this one they didn't review I, that I know of about the money one but they did review you are a badass and they liked it so I was gifted this a year or so ago and I I just started it this uh, well I started at the end of last year but I again go through these chapters kind of slowly write some notes journal underline some things really process some things but I could be doing it more quickly I could be finishing this book more quickly I'm about a third of a way through this one and I would like to finish it. I don't want to listen to it. I started to listen to it and I felt like it was the kind of nonfiction books can sometimes be hard to listen to for me because I do like to take notes. I do like to journal around what I'm feeling and thinking as things come up. And so I don't always want to listen. This is another example of that. And she actually, I think, has uh, places in the book for you at the end of chapters for you to take notes. Um, so she has some tips and things, fill in the blank, you know, what, what not. So uh, really practical reading. I really like it. So that will be my sixth book. If I complete all of these reads in March, I will have read six books. And that will really catapult me toward my goal of 40 books this year. So if you want to take a look at Chris at Books and Jams, I'll put a link to her description below, as well as Katie's for Life Between Words, as well as the podcast that I'm referring to about um, the reviews of nonfiction, self-help type genre books. And um, stay tuned. This week, I've got a big surprise coming up at the end of the week. If you follow me on Facebook, you may have already seen it. I'm very excited about it. Uh, so something neat is coming up on Friday. But for now, this will wrap up my March reading plan. And I will come back at the end of March and let you know how I did. Until then, please like this video if you do. Subscribe if you would like. You can get notifications by clicking on the little bell. I always forget to tell people that. So get a notification when there's a new video up and share it with others that might appreciate it. Happy middle grade March. Happy Mardi Gras, which is actually uh, that time of year here where I live. If you live here or if you just love Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. And until then, until next time, I wish you very happy reading. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.